Would Ruben Neves be a good signing for Manchester United or Arsenal? In this video, I'll analyse Neves' ability, looking at him statistically as well as where his best role in the side is tactically. Before I talk about which players from each side could be used in a potential swap deal, and at the end I'll give my verdict on whether United or Arsenal should pursue Neves or if there are better options. But before I get into the analysis, let me tell you about my favourite football app, which is the One Football app. This is where I go to keep up to date with the latest circulating transfer rumours, and I find the match section on the app incredibly useful for as well. If you like this channel, you'll definitely love this app. So when you go to subscribe to the channel and give the video a like, which would be very much appreciated, make sure you click the link in the description to get the one football app as well, which will help support this channel. So Ruben Neves is 24 years old and his current contract at Wolves runs out in 2024. Reports suggest that Wolves were asking for a fee in the region of £40 million, substantially less than they would have been demanding last summer. But is Neves worth this fee? Well, in terms of what type of player he is, I would describe Neves as a deep line player playmaker, who's at his best when he's playing as the most creative player in a deep midfield double pivot. Neves is a phenomenal long passer, arguably the best in the league, and we can see this as he completed the most long passes of any player in the league last season of 6.3 per 90 minutes. He also only made 3.6 inaccurate long passes per 90, giving him an impressive long pass success rate of 63.6%. The value of Neves' long passing can be seen here as he receives the ball in front of the Crystal Palace midfield, and with one long direct pass he's able to move the ball from a pretty unthreatening position to the inside of the opposition's box. This would be incredibly valuable for United to have in their central midfield as it would give them the ability of opening up a deep compact defensive unit through a more direct route. However, Neves' passing can also be incredibly effective on the counter-attack, as he showed against Leicester the season before last. He picked up the ball in his own defensive third after a turnover from a Leicester attack. He instantly gets the ball out of his feet, and rather than dribbling to carry the ball forward, he instead sees the opportunity to play a perfect long pass over the back line, and he does this without hesitation, setting Jota free to score a one-on-one. -on -one. This type of attacking move would definitely suit Manchester United, particularly with the likes of Rashford and Martial up front, who have the pace to make these runs in behind. Aubameyang and Pepe could also thrive from this sort of move, should Neves be in that deeper midfield role in the Arsenal midfield. Neves' forward passing and press resistance would also be of massive value to both Arsenal and Manchester United, as seen as Neves completed the 29th most passes into the final third of any player in Europe's top five leagues, with 203 last season. To be fair, Fred wasn't too far behind him, ranking in 47th with 174, but surprisingly, Granit Xhaka is actually 6th, ranking the highest Premier League player in this list, with 268 total passes into the final third last season. Neves' long shooting ability is his standout attribute, and we have seen this over the last few seasons, just how good Neves is from outside of the box, whether that is a long shot, a volley, or a free kick. But Neves isn't the type of deep line playmaker that is considered a liability without the ball. He ranks 10th out of every central midfielder in the league for tackles completed, with 3 per 90 minutes, the same amount as Bissouma and Hoiberg, whilst only getting drilled past 1.7 times per 90, giving him an impressive tackle success rate of 63.8%. He also completed the 5th most interceptions of any Premier League central midfielder, with 2.2 per 90, which stems from his excellent awareness of players behind him and anticipation which allows him to position himself correctly in order to be able to cut off an incisive pass, showing that both with and without the ball Neves looks statistically like one of the best central midfielders in the league. Neves isn't the most athletic central midfielder, so I wouldn't use him as an anchor man in a single pivot, as players in that role need to have pace and stamina to be able to race from side to side and pressure and intercept. In this role, I feel like Neves could be far too isolated and face the same problems that Jorginho had at the start of his Chelsea career when playing in that role in a 4-3-3 under Maurizio Sarri. But how would Neves fit into Manchester United and Arsenal systems? Well, I Arsenal Neves would slot into Arteta's 4-2-3-1 alongside Thomas Partey, and I think that this would make an excellent midfield, with Neves being the primary deep line creator, and Partey having the pace and stamina to make up for Neves' lack of athleticism. But both players are very good positionally and good readers of the game. Neves could also obviously play in that role in a 5-2-3 or a 5-3-2 system as he did for Nuno at Wolves. At Manchester United, Neves would slot into Manchester United's midfield alongside either Fred or McTominay. I think Fred and Neves would be the best duo to go with because Fred can be the more aggressive presser pushing up tight onto the opposition central midfield, whilst Neves drops deeper, cutting off the passing lanes into players between the lines. The only concern I would have would be that if United were only to bring in Neves in central midfield, this would mean that United wouldn't have that anchor man like athletic defensive midfielder to pair alongside Pogba to allow him to run forward to get the best out of him. I did talk about whether I thought Eduardo Camavinga 
or Declan Rice would be good in central midfield for Manchester United, so check out those videos afterwards, I will leave them linked in the description, as well as my video from last year analysing Ruben Neves and whether I thought he should make a move to Manchester United, so you can check that out for comparison. So we know that Neves would suit both Manchester United and Arsenal tactically, but should either of them sign him? The Wolves are demanding around £40 million for Neves and considering he is just 24 years old, I think this is great value for money. Neves isn't a world class central midfielder, but he definitely has a capability to be. He reminds me of Xabi Alonso in terms of his best attributes and style of play, and I could see them having similar careers which, like Alonso, could see Neves improve as his career goes on and even peak in his early 30s. Neves is a deep line playmaker and Tony Cruz, in my eyes, is the best deep line playmaker in the world, but Neves isn't miles off. I would say that he is just as good as the likes of Calvin Phillips and Jorginho and at a higher level than some of the players like Zakaria and Tonelli. Arsenal should definitely look to do this deal alongside Thomas Partey as this would give them a top level central midfield. The £40 million transfer fee is a lot for Arsenal to pay, particularly after splashing out £50 million on Ben White, so if they could include a player in a deal that would definitely aid them financially. Players like Lucas Torreira and Rob Holding could make up half of the fee worth around £20 million in my opinion, whilst players like Ainsley Maitland-Niles, Joe Willock, Callum Chambers and Eddie Nketiah would probably make up around £15 million of the £40 million transfer fee, but a question would obviously be whether Wolves would accept a player plus cash or demand cash alone. United can definitely afford the £40 million transfer more than Arsenal, and the only players I could really see being worth putting in this deal would be Jesse Lingard for £20 million, maybe Matic for around £10 million, and even possibly players like Twanzebi and Dallo going to Wolves on loan. However, I think Lingard would probably prefer a move back to West Ham, and it's only really worth loaning Twanzebi and Dallo if they are going to be starters for 30 plus games, and I don't think that's a given at Wolves, and I wouldn't be confident that Wolves would want a declining Matic on their books, so the better option would probably be for United to just pay the £40 million asking price. So overall, I do think that both clubs should be trying to sign Neves. Whilst I would prefer either Locatelli or Camavinga if I was Manchester United, I still think that Neves would be an excellent sign-in. The only reason I wouldn't push hard for Neves is because of my concerns around him playing alongside Pogba in a double pivot. However, if Pogba isn't signing a new deal, then United should be looking to bring in Neves and another central midfielder who is more of a ball winner to partner Neves and add that balance to the midfield. For Arsenal, I'm not sure if they'd be able to attract Neves in the first place and I do think that the £40 million fee is a lot considering the other areas of the squad they need to improve. And there are other very good options on the market like Zakaria and Sangare, who aren't at Neves' level just yet but would cost significantly less. So thank you for watching, if you enjoyed that video remember to subscribe to the channel and click the bell so you get notified when my videos come out. Check out some of my other videos which will be linked in the description below, like my videos on Kamavinga, Rice, Varane and my Nevers video last year and put your thoughts in the comment section and follow me on Instagram and Twitter for more content as well.